As my first year as a rebel comes to an end, I'm going to take the opportunity to put together for you my top five reports of 2021. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's your friend Matt Brevener with Rebel News, friendly neighborhood video journalist to the BC region, and I'm here to share with you my top five favorite reports, my personal reports of 2021. Now, for Canada, this has been 2021 has been a crazy year between elections. I won't call it a media organization. Your group of uh, individuals. Pandemics. In the, sorry, I'm, I'm not using it today. The Church arsonists, et cetera, et cetera. And I've had the privilege to cover some of these stories myself. And I'll tell you this much. When I started working for Rebel, I was hired as an editor. I had no intention of being a journalist. Um, but here I am sitting with you guys now, and I must say it's been an extremely rewarding, fulfilling, and challenging experience thus far. So I think I will be sharing them in order. My fifth favorite report of 2021 would have been the BC Freedom March protest in September, where subsequently I was actually attacked, physically assaulted by an Antifa wannabe member. We'll show that clip right here. Behind me is a small business BC protest that has now began to march down Canby Street in Vancouver. There's a few hundred people from all different walks of life, small business owners, teachers, firefighters, nurses, parents, all of whom are concerned about the mandatory vaccine passports and segregation that's coming to Vancouver. Check it out. I was here last Wednesday and I feel like just the way the media has been covering it and demonizing all these people who are just standing up for freedom in Canada, like it just made me think, okay, I gotta keep going. I, we have to keep showing up and show people that uh, there's Canadians that are asking questions and want to have dialogue about this and see a see you know see a potential real problem with what's coming, what's happening right now. We're here for our freedoms. We're here for our rights. We're gonna make a difference, and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it diplomatically. Yeah, we're going to vote Trudeau out. PPC. Maxim Bernier. Hey, man, can I ask you some questions? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a person of color. You don't have to touch me. I'm a person of color. I'm a person of color. And vaccine, vaccine passports disproportionately affect Canadians of color. In fact, only 30% of black Canadians are vaccinated. So I see that your shirt says, I see that your shirt says, F racism, sir. Your shirt says, your shirt. Well, you don't have to push me. I see that, I see. I see that your shirt says F racism, sir. Black Canadians are disproportionately Black Canadians are dis Black Canadians are Black Canadians are disproportionately vaccinated. Black Canadians are disproportionately vaccinated compared to white Canadians. So if you so if you agree if you agree with F racism, sir, I would I would imagine that you I would imagine that you have empathy for the plight of the black Canadian. I, I'm not ah. Oh. He just. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys got that. This guy says F racism. I mean, are, are you okay with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Says F racism, he just elbow. Hey, this, this clown right here says F racism and he elbows a black and Japanese reporter in the face. F racism, he says. He's a, he's a flaming hypocrite. In fact, if you support these unfair, unjust vaccine passports in Canada, which disproportionately affect black Canadians, you could make the argument that that is racist policy. So I was just trying to get his, his opinion on that, but clearly he would rather just elbow me in the face, elbow free journalists in the face. I have it on camera actually. Um, anyways, take care, God loves you, God bless you. I hope you can find some joy and happiness in your life, sir. Anyways, just another just another day in tolerant Vancouver. The guy was wearing a shirt that said F racism on it, and for some reason he didn't like being pressured or asked questions by a visible minority reporter. The irony wasn't lost on me. But anyways, I hope he's doing well. I hope he can find some peace in his life, and I wish the man a happy holidays. My fourth favorite report of 2021 would have to be my most recent one actually sitting down with Dr. Tyler, the naturopath doctor who was laid off 
or you know fired without pay let's be honest for refusing to be vaccinated and for standing up for his colleagues and his students who are also in a similar position let's show some of dr tally right here how is that uh nope. Can I, yeah, so the elevator is this way if you guys want to head out. Sure. Appreciate it. Sure, yeah. Yeah. You can head out. Thank sure, you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks. Let's head out, guys. Sure, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. What's that? I have to go in the go. Well, uh I attended the college uh to the clinic. It's in fact to uh to go to my regular shift where I supervise. I put in an eight hour shift there. Uh, being their longest standing, oldest uh, licensed doctor on staff, I thought, well, you know, I'll just show up for my regular shift. But I was met at the door, unfortunately, by, you know, a group of people uh, who were bent on barring me from entering the clinic. Uh, my supervisor very conveniently went on holidays, you know, so when the, when the push comes to shove, um, they're not there. Uh, some students are very close to graduating. Uh, you know, in a week they would they would get a, a their doctorate, but you know to be um, held at, as it were at gunpoint, you know, gun to your head to not be able to graduate, get your degree that you spent ten years of in, uh, education invested in that, and goodness knows way more than hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, and to have that held over your head. Uh, just doesn't seem right or fair to me. Uh, it's wrong. You know the world's gone nuts when even naturopathic doctors don't have the choice on whether they want to vaccinate or not. The irony isn't lost on me and I hope that they can figure it out. But in the meantime, I commend Dr. Tyler for standing up for what's right and defending those who can't defend themselves. Uh, number three on my favorite reports of 2021. Okay, this was this was an interesting one for me. It's it's the Kelowna Freedom Rally. It's when uh, Chris Guy was doing his cross country convoy, and I was given the opportunity to cover the Kelowna segment of this. And it was very early into my employment with Rebel. I had never done a report on my own, let alone a traveling report on my own. And it was a pretty wild experience, uh, one, one I definitely will never ever forget. And the energy and the vibe amongst the Kelowna protesters was just special. Uh, the Okanagan really knows how to come together and support one another and throw a great party. We'll, we'll throw some to some of that footage here. I've been doing this for a year and a half now, right? And just. You know, my mom does. I can't see my mom. She she wants to stay six feet away from us. You know, it's just tough. Can't hug her. Can't do anything. I have a grandma who's 96 years old. We haven't seen yet. She's kind of getting dementia and she doesn't know what's going on. And I want to go down and see her, but everyone's like, "Oh no, no we'll see her. She's gonna get sick." And but I'm gonna go see her. You know what I mean? And you know, if, if she gets sick, then maybe there's something to worry about. But I, I don't think there is anything to worry about. I think this is all a government employ, and they're just trying to. The elites are trying to take over. I think our grandparents, our forefathers in Canada lost their lives so that we could have freedom and now here we sit back and say I don't like it I don't like it but what do we do we mask up no no rise up Canada it's your last chance if the person comes up to my youngest one who's eight months old and uh, tries to talk to my youngest daughter you're not going to be able to talk to her like she's she's not going to understand what's going on because right. she doesn't see your face and your eyes don't talk the turnout was fantastic. The energy was spectacular. They have like the happiest, most positive energy here of any city I went to. Alberta had the fighting energy. And these people just had that positive, overwhelming, good energy that they could see. Like, did you see any police presence at the event yesterday? No, I saw maybe one car. Exactly. Yeah. The biggest police presence was the, the police that came on uh, bicycles at the beginning when we were setting up. They weren't wearing any masks. And all they said to everybody was, we're here to make sure you're safe and help you fight for your freedoms. A number two for my top five reports of 2021. That has to be when Justin Trudeau was in White Rock. So it's, I'm not, sir. I don't mean to, I hope that doesn't make you uncomfortable or whatever else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, giving a, a speech on affordable housing and the local White Rock community literally chased him out. I don't think there's point talking to him. I think this guy basically represents, who, he's a drama teacher, okay? and he has absolutely no uh, place in politics 
of, here, here. Of, of a city, not to mention the country. You know? Chased the man out of their neighborhood. Uh, I managed to get really close to him and ask him some difficult questions. Uh, it was all a blur. Honestly, it happened so fast. My gut told me that the bus was a decoy and they were going to make it to the street. Um, so I spoke with, with my cameraman about that and sure enough we were right and I was able to ask him some hard questions. Obviously the man had no answers for me, um, but yeah, that was definitely one of the craziest experiences of my life. Oh, he's not getting on the bus. He's not getting on the bus. He's not getting on the bus. Justin, our vaccine passport's here to stay, sir! Our vaccine passport's here to stay! Vaccine passports disproportionately affect people of color in Canada, sir! Overwhelmingly! Vaccine passports disproportionately affect black Canadians, sir. How long are vaccine passports here to stay, sir? Will there be religious exemptions for, for the unvaccinated in Canada, sir? Get, get the protesters. Sir, will there be religious exemptions? Will there be religious exemptions for vaccine passports, sir? Sir, will there be religious exemptions, sir? Do you think that it's insensitive? to call a snap election when there are Canadian armed forces dying in Afghanistan, stuck in Kabul, sir? Do you think it is insensitive? Sir, vaccine passports disproportionately affect people of color, Canadians of color, sir. Are vaccine passports here to stay, sir, or are they temporary? Are vaccine passports here to stay, or are they temporary? Will there be religious exemptions for vaccine passports, sir? Well, like I predicted, the bus was a decoy, and uh, they didn't want anyone to ask real difficult questions, so... But fortunately for us, we got to ask some questions. Uh, I hope you caught that. Uh, no answer. Yet again, from the Prime Minister of our country, just smiles and selfies, and he dodges difficult questions. Smiles and selfies, but hey, at least he has a nice tie, right? Never mind 4% inflation, at least he has a nice tie. And again, the story is gonna be the crazy protesters. A lot of the work, a majority of the work that I've been doing uh, this year with Rebel has actually been videography and shooting reports and creating reports with, with my colleague Drea Humphrey, which has brought us all over the country. So I'm going to throw in some honorable mentions of my favorite reports that I've actually shot and edited uh, with and for Drea. Um, honorable mention has to go out to the Kamloops Indian School. Uh, the reservation school report um, we were willing to ask questions that no one else was willing to ask and i know journalistically that report really pushed drea she really gave her all into that report to honor the people who had fallen but also to bring light to the situation and and i remember uh, when the festivities were happening we were invited onto the grounds onto the reserve grounds and uh, there was a drum circle that was happening and it was just like a really beautiful experience and i just felt that energy, that something that I hadn't felt before, and it was just such an amazing, awesome time. So I would be amiss without mentioning this report and throwing to some of that footage. So uh, let's show some of that right now. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News standing in front of the Kamloops Indian Residential School. Now I gotta tell you, this is our second day here, and this has been a difficult report to do, not just because of the history of schools like this, where kids were taken away from their families, made helpless victims to all sorts of abuse, neglect, and even death. And not just because I know we still don't know the half of stories like that, even within my own family, my family that attended residential schools as well, were not able to talk about their memories there. But another reason this was hard is because as my job as a journalist bringing you the full story, it's been difficult to do so. And also, the last thing I want to see happening is politicians or people in power using the suffering of our Indigenous people for their own political purposes. Hence, many First Nations still not having clean water in Canada after particular politicians on their rise to power had promised to do so. 
while preparing to report to you about the tumultuous and emotional discovery about what we're told is 215 remains of students who used to attend here. We've shared in grief of the people who have come from far and near to be here, including Stanley Paul, a former student of this residential school. You're going to meet him in this report. But for now, let's take a walk around the property and sort through some of the facts and also some of the assumptions that have been given about what has taken place here. Another honorable mention report before I get to number one has to be when Drea and I were at Lafarge Lake when Justin Trudeau and John Horgan were campaigning for affordable uh, child care in the area and Drea was forcibly removed um, by one of Trudeau's personal security detail. The thing that's really interesting about that is, yes, we're in a public park, in a public place. Obviously, all press is allowed to be there, and civilians are allowed to be there also. But before the press conference took place, someone from Trudeau's personal security detail came up to us, singled us out immediately, and came up to us and asked us if we were there specifically to ask difficult questions, like the press isn't supposed to ask difficult questions or something. Drea Humphrey. Okay. With the which story? Rebel News. Okay, are you guys allowed to be here? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, nice What's to be here. Drea. Drea, nice yeah. to be Yeah. And if you guys, are you with uh, uh, a media? Or yeah, the, we're independent media. And what yeah. is it? Rebel News. And, okay, I've heard of it, but I don't know much. I work with the protective detail, so. Oh, right. I see. Oh, okay. But being independent, it, maybe it's the name that throws me off, Rebel, like. <laughs> Uh, and it was probably to, pretty to accurate. Do you ask like hard questions? Or yes, we, yeah. we do ask. But you respect the, the time allowed? Yeah, of not course. Gonna Absolutely. Like We're that. completely professional, yeah. That's, that's, right. that's really good. Yeah. Anyways, that was bizarre. And everything that followed that day was extremely bizarre also. Um, but yeah, I hadn't witnessed anything like that before in my life. And it was a, it was a crazy moment. So yeah, let's throw that to that clip here. I'm not gonna go too close. <laughs> you talked about Canada's last wrongs, the past things they haven't done right. When will you speak out about the 20 vandalized churches? They're burning churches and vandalizing them and you're not calling it a hate crime. This is Canada, folks. The Prime Minister won't ask the tough questions. They're acknowledging past wrongs Canada has allowed to happen in this country, but they won't speak out about 20 churches being burnt or vandalized in the last three weeks, by the way, with
which puts everybody at risk for fires as well, just like we saw in Lytton, B.C. So this is the Prime Minister looking to be re-elected, but not speaking out against the terrorist actions against Christian places of worship. Okay, guys, my number one. Number one report of the year. It has to go to the report I did on Trinity Western University and the students at Trinity Western who were being refused, you know, dormitory access, cafeteria access, scholarship, uh, athletic programs for not being vaccinated. And again, a Christian school, which should be leading the way against this fight, against tyranny, is actually not even honoring religious exemptions. I thought that that was so bizarre. And, you know, I, I tried to interview some staff. Nobody wanted to talk to me. And in fact, after the fact, the students were reprimanded for speaking to the press. Um, but someone's got to tell the story and someone's got to get this out. So, uh, all the students that I talked to were just amazing kids, uh, amazing future leaders of this country, uh, so well-spoken and articulate and researched and calm and cool and collected. And honestly, it was such a pleasure to be able to, to share their story with all of you. My plans this year and maybe next year, depending on how my basketball career went, was to go pursue professional contracts. And it wasn't a pipe dream, it was a very real possibility. So I would have been making a lot of money playing this game and my career would have been basketball. And now that these mandates have been put in place, it kind of takes away everything I've worked for the last 10 years of my life. It's just crazy to think that today I can practice with my team, but in three days I can't. And it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I lost a scholarship, a place to live. Um, it caused me to have to find housing in three days. I didn't have a car, but as a commuter, you, you can't not have a car. So I had to buy a car um, and yeah, down thousands of dollars in money that was helping me afford Trinity. So yeah. You have the right to choose not to, and you actually have the right not to be kicked out of your campus housing or kicked out of your programs or kicked off your athletics team. I mean, I, I know there are upwards of 40 students, 40 student athletes at Trinity that have been uh, kicked off their teams and either forced to practice with JV teams or just off the teams completely um, because of their decision not to get the vaccine. And what an impressive group of young people. Uh, you know, I was taken aback by their steadfast willingness to stand for their rights. They see what's happening around the country, their country, you know, a, a nation that they should be inheriting, a nation that should be full of prosperity, freedom, hope, optimism. Instead, these kids at a Christian university of all places are being denied meal tickets, housing. You know, I had to open up the meeting last night with by saying, first off is number one, if any of you are being denied a roof over your head, Come see us, we will find a place for you to stay. University students in British Columbia right now are at risk of being stripped of their scholarships, their on-campus housing, their food programs, and their athletic programs simply because they refuse to get vaccinated. It's a horror show. You're not gonna wanna miss out on this report. There you have it, folks. Matt Brevner's top five reports of 2021. Now, if you appreciate the work that we do at Rebel News, being able to travel all around the country, bringing you the other side of the story, reporting on things that, you know, Big Brother does not want us to report on, I ask you, please chip in a little bit. Help us tell the story, help us tell your story. Go to rebelfieldreports.com and donate what you can. Uh, anything helps. It goes towards, you know, things like gas money, uh, lunch, hotels, uh, moderate priced hotels, whatever, whatever we can do so we can travel around and keep bringing you the other side of the story. Uh, we really appreciate your support because honestly, none of these reports, none of my top five reports here, none of me, me even sitting here talking to you isn't possible without your love and, and your support. And we are extremely grateful for that. Uh, I look forward to talking to you again in 2022 and bringing you my top five reports of 2022. But until then, I wish you a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, God bless you. Take care.